Now we're getting down to the actual offer here. And one thing I want everybody to understand is you can have the same product and you can offer it in multiple different ways. So if your first shot at the offer doesn't work, it doesn't mean you get a different product. It means you, your offer wasn't right. So you need to reframe the product in a different way. Your perfect offer is made up of the product, of any bonuses you add to alleviate objections. I, I don't have enough room in my house. I, I'm downsizing. I don't know how it's gonna look on my wall. That's the bonuses. The price, the price point. You're not gonna be Walmart. You may not be Bombwit Teller yet, but you're not gonna be Walmart. I'm telling you now, you gotta look at price. And if you think you're gonna get more sales by pricing like Walmart, you're wrong. Because people look at paintings that are priced at unbelievably low rock bottom prices and they think, well, it must not be good. And even if it looks good and I kind of like the way it looks, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. So it can't be any good because it's too cheap. So watch the price. Payment terms, it includes how are they gonna pay? Are they gonna have the ability to use credit card, cash or check? Are they gonna be able to use PayPal? Is, are they gonna be able to do layaway? Are they gonna be able to do a commission? And last but not least, the guarantee. How are you gonna reverse the risk? How are you gonna make them feel safe about buying? It's all five things together. It's not just the product. You have the same product and you can change out number two through five and it'll be a totally different offer. And I'm including, you can change the price. So if your bonus is different, you can change the price. If your payment terms are different, you can change the price. If your guarantee is different, you can change the price. So you can offer the same product in multiple different ways. For example, you can have a course. And you can, in one offer, you can offer it as a self-study where they don't have any contact with you. They just get the modules, they get the videos, and they go do the course. They don't have any contact with you. That's one offer. Then you can package that same course, same videos, with bonuses that include like a community, a Facebook community, that includes some Q and A's one-to-one -one time with you. And the price now just doubled. It went up because it includes more stuff. So it, you can reframe the offer with the exact same product. You can do it in different ways. So I want you to make sure you think about all five of these, that you're not leaving any of those out because if you leave any of those out, you're not making sure you're hitting on the things that are gonna make the perfect offer. So you want to give them the thing they want that's gonna make the transformation they want. You want to alleviate objections, which is what bonuses are, extras are, like free shipping. You want to create a price point that is in alignment with your target market. And you wanna have payment terms that work, that alleviate objections. And you wanna have a guarantee that risk reverses the risk, that makes it easier for them to buy. So I want you to think right now about what you would do with your product to package it up into an offer that's gonna appeal to those perfect people you've been looking at. What are some of the questions that you saw come up? What are some of the objections that people have had in the past that you've heard? Um, what uh, are you going, what kind of price points are they expecting? Now price points, you have to look at what the market will bear and it's based on your experience, your skills, and the market that you're in. All three things. And that has to be in alignment with what they're looking for, what they love, and what resources they have to exchange for that thing. 
because price points go all over the place. There is no single price point that is the price point for a painting or a price point for a sculpture or a price point for a course. If you haven't taught before online, then, or if you've never taught before, you want to look at what people who have the same level of experience that you've done have have done before or just ahead of you. If you've taught offline, but now you're going online, a good place to start is what you've been charging for offline. It's a good place to get going. Understand you can tweak each one of these things. And one, just because one offer doesn't necessarily hit, doesn't mean you can't reframe it. So, um, shall say, how can we determine a price point? So the way I teach people to do price points is to research what other people with the same skills in the same niche and with the same level of experience are charging. And so you, you really have to look at what other people are charging and charging too much less just to get the business is not necessarily a good move because then people think you're Walmart. So look at what else is out there. That's one part. You do have to look at what the market can bear. You don't just charge what everybody else is charging. That's called price fixing and you can't do that. But you also look at the value of your time and the value of your materials. So it's by the size of the piece, the value of the time, your time and the value of your materials all of the above. Um, Under says, I'm struggling with price points for commissioned portraits as websites say contact for commissions. Ooh. When you're doing a commission, it's a whole different thing than a regular painting. And you need to charge at least 20% more. So you need to charge more money for it. And the reason is in a commission process, there is a lot more dialogue back and forth between you and your client about the process and about acceptance along the different st stages of checking in. And you run a risk, you yourself run more risk if they reject the ultimate final painting. So you charge more for a commission, it takes more time. It just literally takes more time. So take what you would charge for the same painting, same size, same materials, everything else, and up it by at least 20%. Most people charge 20 to 30% more. Um, so it's 20 to 30% more. So let's think about what kind of bonuses you would add for selling a painting. So I hope that, let me go ahead here, just for a second, I want you to write the description down of your product that focuses on the benefits and the transformation. And a lot of this you're gonna do for homework. But I also wanna go through what each of these things are. And I think focusing on bonuses, price, and guarantees are where most of y'all's questions are gonna be. So let's look at bonuses. Bonuses for artwork, whether it's painting, sculptures, prints, whatever. Bonuses for artwork would be um, free shipping would be a bonus that you could include. You could give a discount on the framing if it's a 2D piece. You could include a care guide. You could include a guide to installation or framing. It's a free gift. Yeah, anything that's in alignment with what the thing is. So um, you don't want to give them an iPad. You know, that's the, the example that's used in the marketing world all the time. If somebody buys your course, the bonus doesn't need to be an iPad or a smartphone. It needs to be something that's in alignment with what the object is. So the bonus could be a set of note cards. The bonus could be a little brochure that tells the story of the painting or a little book that tells the story of the artwork 
that that client can then pull out and show their friends that makes them feel special. Um, it could be, um, it could be a book that you've created about your work. So a lot of artists create um, as promotional material, a small brochure booklet or a book about their work in general that has like a dozen, two dozen, maybe 20 pieces in there and blurbs about the paintings. Well, you could make that a bonus that goes with every purchase. One time I did as a bonus because I had them, um, I gave um, a reproduction with the purchase of every painting. Was it every painting or if people bought two? But I, I think I gave a print with every painting. And that was just because I happened to have some prints around that I was gonna get rid of. So a bonus could be something extra. It could be another print, it could be note cards, it could be a poster. I've done that before too. So think about uh, a bonus. Price points, you want to think about considering the time, amount of time it takes you to create it. And you wanna think about the cost of your materials. And you wanna think about the market that you're in, your niche, and price accordingly. Most artists price according to size, and they use the amount of time and the materials it takes to create one piece that size to then determine the price for all the other pieces. So you could start with one bonus. It could be um, you're gonna offer um, the book, on your work. That's the bonus that everybody gets, or everybody gets a free print. And as you're going through, if you're releasing a collection, then you could on day two offer free shipping and everybody who's bought all along would get free shipping. Or you could offer free shipping at the beginning and you just wanna layer the bonuses on. You wanna have at least something to begin with and then you can layer things on top. So you can add to the bonuses as, as you go through, or you can take bonuses away. If you buy today, you will get free shipping and a book or free shipping and note cards. If you buy tomorrow, you're only gonna get free shipping. If you buy next week, you're not gonna get free shipping and you're not gonna get any note cards. All of that adds to scarcity and it makes people take action and it's real scarcity. Um, it's, it's gonna go away. So when you take stuff away, it encourages people to buy. Certificates of authenticity. They're great. Oops, I accidentally hit the wrong button there. Um, they're great and they go down to number five. It goes down to a guarantee. You're guaranteeing that it is an original artwork. And so when you send a certificate of authenticity, you're guaranteeing that you made it, it's yours, and you're either guaranteeing that it's an original or it's a reproduction that you've had made. And it goes to one of the things that they get concerned about, is it a real work of art? How do I know? So you're certifying something with a certificate of authenticity. Do you have to send one? No, there are a lot of artists who don't. I hardly ever do it. Um, I sign the back of my paintings, they're signed on the front, they're authenticated that way, and there's oodles, a buttload of um, proof via documentation online. So I don't do them, but I know a lot of people who do. And I think certainly starting out, it helps to build trust. The purpose of number five is to build trust. And the authenticity part can be part of that. And having a refund policy can be part of that. Letting them switch paintings out if it doesn't work. Um, any of those things can reverse the risk and and add to that level of trust. Um, yeah, you can give them a discount on the next painting. That becomes a bonus. Buy one now and you'll get 10% off of, future per uh, of your next painting. So remember, price is on your time, your materials, and you figure it out for one piece, and then you can extrapolate that to everything else. Payment terms online, people like to be able to pay by credit card 
and a lot of people like to be able to use PayPal. Some people hate using PayPal. But if you don't have the PayPal option, you're leaving money on the table. So I always recommend that people have PayPal as an option because there are a lot of people who won't buy any other way. So think about including that. Have some sort of guarantee. And there are, there's a guarantee for every single artist out there and they're all different. It could be a 14 day guarantee, a 30 day guarantee, a 90 day guarantee. What it cannot be is a forever guarantee. So uh, there are stories I've heard of people coming back 10 years later and saying, um, this painting doesn't really work in my house anymore. Can I trade it for another painting? No, you're not a lending library. <laughs> Don't do that. Unless it's a client who's bought paintings repeatedly over time and they are such an excellent patron that you want to love all over them and give them that opportunity, but that should not be your standard practice. And I saw somebody talking about repairing something forever. I don't do that either. And here's why I don't. So I have a client that when I was living all the time in Colombia, she bought a painting from me 20 years ago. And it was a work on paper. It was an acrylic on paper. And it was framed, it was matted, and it was under glass. And she moved. And while she was moving, she stored her art in her attic. And it got really hot in the South Carolina summer. It became about 106 degrees. And this was just last summer. So it had been 20 years since she bought the painting. And she emailed me, I left it in the attic and the painting stuck to the glass. When the framer went to take it apart to reframe it, it tore. Can you fix it? I'm no longer in that area. And I don't want to have a guarantee out there that I'm going to always fix everything in perpetuity because that's too big a promise and you can't fulfill that. What if they put a big old giant hole through the middle and you don't have the skills to fix it? So be really, really, really careful what kind of promises you make. Promises are, are a form of guarantee and you want to make sure you can actually fulfill it. It's the reason I don't tell people they have lifetime access to courses because that's not honest. If people hear that, they think they're going to have access to whatever it is for the rest of their life and software changes, platforms change, devices change. You don't know what kind of delivery platform is going to be out there in 20 years. And if you say you have lifetime access, you're promising that you're going to redevelop whatever it is that you're delivering for whatever the new platform is. And that's not an honest promise that you can follow through on. Do I take stuff away from people? No. And I let them download it so they can have it forever on their device. But I'm not going to promise that I'm going to migrate it to whatever the new platform that I can't picture in my head yet. Maybe it's going to be three-dimensional artificial um, environments, uh, my course might not fit in that. So you got to be careful what you promise so that you are being really, really, really honest there. That becomes part of the guarantee. So we've got product, we've got bonuses, we've got price, we've got payment terms, and we've got guarantees. Now, in terms of price, there's one other thing I wanted to address there, and it goes back to, you remember that Venn diagram I did yesterday, where we had what you love to do, what they love, what you have the skills to do, and what they have the money to buy. And if there is not an overlap between the availability of resources they have and what you're offering, then there's gonna be a mismatch. 
So you want to make sure that the target market you're looking at can afford the product that you're offering, the offer that you're making. So if you're going to people who are age 30 and have just bought their first new home, the vast majority of them are not going to have $10,000 to invest in a six by eight foot painting. But they might have the money to invest in a six by eight foot reproduction on Canvas. So you've got to make sure that the offer, the price point matches where your target market is and that you're, you're aligning the offer with them. Or you can have some really sad outcomes. So you want to make sure they can afford what you're offering. If they can't, then you need to reframe the offer so you're giving them something they can afford. You can, in audience insights, look at the overall income of the people that you're looking at. So let's go back to Facebook. And I'm going to switch shares there. And we're going to look at income levels, which is a demographic. And I'm going to look at the different income levels associated with just a couple of different um, markets. So yeah, you can get an idea of whether you're going in the right direction. And some people in the group won't be able to afford it, and some people will. And as Virginia says, local tourism organizations will have analytics. There's all kind of demographic analytics out there on locations. So you can definitely get it for specific locations without even going to Facebook's Audience Insights, which seems to be having trouble right now. Facebook has been very, very glitchy for the last couple of days and very slow to load. So hopefully this is gonna work. Um, if I go to, I'm gonna go back to my favorite example, Garden and Gun. I'll look at two of them. When I'm looking at the demographics there, I can get an idea. Now they do not give you income levels anymore. There was a time they did. There definitely was a time they did. But the way that they're ranking, look at the, the job title and you can extrapolate roughly whether they're gonna be able to afford it or not. So somebody who's in administrative services is probably not going to be able to afford, afford the $10,000 painting that somebody in business and finance could. Somebody in management is going to be able to afford it. So think about the general roles that people have there. So that gives you an overall idea for that particular market. That was that upscale garden and gun that caters to people who love Southern culture. Now, if we go to another one, this is um, one of my favorite. We're going to do Saatchi because this is where people make a lot of mistakes. Saatchi Art Online. I think that's the one that's online. Okay, a lot of the people who like and follow Saatchi online are actually artists. It's not the buyers. So you can see that reflected in that top part there. So when it's people who describe their job title as arts, entertainment, sports, media, that's going to be a wide range of income levels. So a lot of those are all of us who are following Saatchi and not the collectors. And you can see that mix in here. So that's all of us, and then it gets down to more of the people who have the money, um, more of the people who are in management and business and IT and computers. So that, that gives you a little bit of an idea of the general 
income level if you're going into groups that are managed by people like this. Yes, and as Gwen says, people who are fly fishers have money because fly fishing is expensive. So that makes a big difference. So look for people who have um, sports or hobbies that are related to what you do. So if I were gonna do landscapes, for example, I'm gonna use one that's similar, but a little different. Um, so there's an area in South Carolina that is horse country around Camden. And if I were gonna paint a series of landscapes around Camden, I would look at the, the groups for horses um, because my paintings of the landscape around Camden are going to appeal to the horse owners around Camden. So, and they have the money because it's expensive to have a horse. People who have horses either have money or they have no money because they're spending it all on their horse. So it's one or the other. So I want you to work on a draft of your perfect offer. And I've got some spaces in here for you to draft it out. Write a description of your product, the thing. Not your whole body of work, but a, a painting, that collection of paintings, that workshop that you're gonna teach online, that course, that class, whatever it is that you're gonna offer. Write the description of it that focuses on the benefits or the transformation. Remember the one that I showed you that's an example. You're gonna start with the product. Then I want you to think about brainstorm what bonuses you could offer to your clients that are going to give them a wow experience that starts with the purchase. You're going to keep on giving, but you want to wow them right away with the offer. Then you, I want you to think about your price point. Estimate how much it's going to cost. You can think about the value of all your bonuses and all the, your product, and you can tell them what it would cost if you charged them for the bonuses, and then tell them what the price actually is gonna be today. So you can say, for example, the price of this painting is $325. Shipping is regularly $15. But as a bonus today, I'm including shipping. So you will only pay $325. And when you talk about it that way, then people get the value. Clearly outline what the payment terms are. So are you offering different methods of payment? Do you offer payment plans? Do they have the option of PayPal credit? Let them know up front. <clears throat> A lot of times PayPal will let them know, sometimes they don't, but you wanna make sure they know that up front. Packs we're not talking about because it's dependent completely on where you are. So, and we've got people on here from countries all around the world, so there's no way we can really speak to tax. Um, you need to consult your local authority about what taxes you need to charge. And you can figure the tax out after the sale and report it and pay it. Um, in which case, sometimes you can be out money. But yeah, most places require some kind of tax that you have to add in. But it's gonna be different on every, um, every place that you are. So it completely depends. The legalities, business licenses, taxes, all of that kind of stuff, I can't give you advice on because we've got people in Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, Texas, California, Ottawa, Vancouver, British Columbia, New Zealand, Australia, and every province has a different rule. We have people in the UK, people in Ireland, people in France, and we can't possibly speak to all of those. So you've got to check on where you are to find out what the rules are for where you are. Most places require both of those in some fashion or form. So you need to deal with your payment terms and you need to be upfront about those so people don't have any questions. Then think about how you're gonna make them feel comfortable, how you're gonna build trust. Make sure you have some guarantee on there, whether it's your refund policy, you're going to um, give them a certificate of authenticity, you're going to show proof. 
so that they can trust you. And you want to reverse the risk so they feel trust. I want you to brainstorm those in your mind. And then I want you to think about narrowing it down for tomorrow. Okay, that's your homework is to work on your offer. I've got a checklist at the end. I want you to check off that you've addressed all five things. So make sure you've addressed all five things in your perfect to offer. Look and see what else is being offered in your niche around. Do that homework so that you come in with an idea of what you're going to offer and how you're going to frame it. Eventually, it goes in almost like an essay. So it's like a, the old-fashioned sales letter. And y'all have read one. You've already read one. You read the sales page for this workshop. That was my offer. And let's look at the parts of it. We'll pull it up and we'll check out its parts so that you can see where those sections are. Because I think everybody looked at that. Let's switch right on over there. So look at the offer. I'm telling people exactly what they're going to walk away with. So they know what it is right up front. So we've got the nuts and bolts description and we've got the transformation right up here. So I'm speaking to the benefit right up at the very tip top. So all of the external internal stuff is right there at the very, very tip top. And then I say who it's for. And then I tell you the alternative, what it's not for. You just need to know. I'm going back to the bits and parts, that transformation, the benefits. Here's what you're going to walk away with. Some of this goes back to the features, but I've already talked about the benefits. So now knowing the features becomes more important. Here's my proof. Here's my guarantee. Some of y'all are on right now. Here you are in print. So I've got testimonials from previous students that talk about their experience and that reverses risk. Now you know that there's some people out there, real people who've been through my courses and have had good experience with it. Then I talk about who I am. Again, this is my guarantee and risk reversal. I taught entrepreneurship for years. So I know how to teach people how to build a business plan. And I built my own successful business. I've been there and I've walked through the same path that y'all have. So again, that's risk reversal and a guarantee. And then I invite people in. Does it say buy my stuff? No, it says, tell me, are you in? It's an invitation. And that is one to one. It's not one to many. So tell me, are you? It's like that poster of Uncle Sam. I want you. So you want to speak directly to them so that it's not ephemeral and it's not just everybody. It's one particular person. So that's what I'm talking about with that. So it does become like an essay. Um, and what we're going to talk about tomorrow is how you're going to put that together. So we've got three messages we're going to write. And the delivery system really isn't important. We're going to talk about different options and how you can deliver it. But we're, there are actually four messages. So we have, we're breaking down that customer journey path where, hello, how are you? I'm, I'm who I am. This is what I have. Then here's the opportunity. Here is the transformation. Here's your invitation. So you separate it out into multiple messages. And you can deliver it via Instagram Messenger, um, Instagram Messages, Facebook Messenger, email, Instagram post, Facebook post, personal one-to-one -one email. The delivery system doesn't matter. What's important is how you frame that message. So we're going to be talking about how to set up that promotion because it's really important to go through and have it be in alignment with that customer journey. Because people come in, they don't know who you are. 
And if you go straight to the sale at the hello, how are you by my stuff, you're going to push people away. So it gets people to move along that path, not by shoving them and forcing them, but by pulling them. And there's a big difference between the two. So I want to make sure everybody knows what I want you to do for tomorrow. I want you to put your offer together in the order that's on that chart. One, two, three, four, five. Write it out, even if it's not in complete sentences yet. Get the right language in there. Think about what you can do for bonuses. Think about how you're going to reverse the risk, how you're going to offer some sort of guarantee, how you're going to offer some sort of proof, how you're going to answer objections so that you have that ready to go. What we're going to be working on tomorrow is the actual promotion itself. We're going to be working on your invitation to purchase on your part of the customer journey that takes people. I wanna share that for just a minute so that everybody remembers what I'm talking about there. So on the customer journey, we are talking about where they're going from not knowing who you are to buying your product. Oops, and now I have left it out, I've gone too fast there. There we go, that's the customer journey. Finding the product online, deciding whether or not to buy it, buying it, experiencing the brand and becoming a loyal customer. We're gonna talk about the message, whether it's gonna go into Messenger, to email, Instagram DMs, onto your private email or your bulk email, wherever it is that you are right now. How you're gonna craft those messages because you need at least for in order to move them from, hey, here I am, to I bought her stuff. So we're going to talk about how you can do that. You're going to write down a description of your product. You're going to write down, brainstorm the bonuses. You're going to nail down what your price point is. You're going to get your payment terms clear. And what kind of guarantee or risk reversal you're going to offer. And make sure you put a check in each of those boxes, and then you'll be golden and good to go for tomorrow. So take care, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye for now.